It's damaging the environment, our own, and our pet's health, and it's a horrible system that creates suffering in billions of animals each year. I'm unapologetic in saying that I want to end the use of animals in our food system, but I think the only rational way to do that is to give everyone a better option. Hey guys, so this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but I I put it on the back burner because I... I don't know, it was so new. I guess I was a little skeptical. I'm still a little skeptical, to be honest. Anyway, Wild Earth, you might have heard about them. They, just a few months ago, I think, announced that they were going to be producing a cultured dog food. It's essentially a vegan dog food. It's made from koji, which is a fungus that traditionally has been used to make, like soy sauce and bean paste. In many ways, koji is incredibly meat-like. The final product can be textured to simulate the chewiness and fiber of meat. The savory flavor is rich and satisfying and dogs find it highly palatable. It was a dog's preference for koji that ultimately guided us to choose it as our dog food protein source. So what gets me most excited about Wild Earth is honestly their professionalism um, and their focus on pet health over ideology, um, of wanting to make sure that their food is actually good for dogs before putting it out on the market. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for some other vegan pet food brands. A lot of these vegan brands, you know, they they don't do testing on their product. They don't have any sort of vet on staff, right? Any sort of expert on staff. And they're essentially just relying on anecdotes from their customers as proof that their product is safe and healthy for pets. Specifically, I'm talking about evolution. Please do not buy their stuff. If you are, please do not feed that to your pets. Um, I talk about that and some other brands in much more detail in this video. And speaking of testing, Wild Earth has just put out a white paper detailing some preliminary nutritional testing. Our initial analysis of palatability and digestibility indicates that Koji meets all current safety and nutritional requirements for dogs. So I am curious about the crude protein. Um, it's 49%, which is a lot. I looked through a bunch of other, I just went to Petco and went to like dry dog food. They had a high protein section too. I looked at like the, the, what is it? Blue Buffalo or something and the taste of the wild. And I looked at the crude protein of all of these high protein, grain-free meat-based brands. I could not find one even close to 49%. I think the highest I saw was like 38. Most of them were around like 36 to 32%, 26 to 32, I'm smart. In this study of eight commercial dog foods from a few years ago, they found a range of 20.9 to 30.6%. I don't think that it's an issue having a really, really high protein diet for like healthy dogs. Obviously it would not be recommended for a dog with any sort of kidney issues, but I'm not an expert. Like this could actually be problematic. I don't know. Um, I did contact the company. I, well, I tweeted at the company. <laughs> Some of you might've seen it. Uh, so hopefully they'll get back to me soon. Other than that, again, they also tested digestibility. They used a simulated dog stomach, essentially gastric and intestinal intestinal juices, 86.1% and 77.6% within two hours, which is apparently excellent. Um, again, according to that study of eight you know, commercial dog foods, um, it seems to be similar to to these dog foods. And they plan to have this out next year, which is pretty awesome. Um, I wanna say before they were saying this year, I, I swear I heard that before and I was like, a little bit skeptical. <laughs> May, I might be thinking of another product though, but uh, yeah, next year, that's that's pretty awesome. And apparently the uh, the treats, they have some Koji based treats that are coming out in like just a couple months, said late, late summer in their PR statement. Um, and they're also working on a cultured product for cats from mice. So this is really exciting. It has so many positive ramifications. If this is actually good and dogs like this, um, obviously from an animal welfare st standpoint, um, from an environmental standpoint as well, apparently according to them, 25 to 30% of the environmental impact of meat is coming from pet food, which if that is true, that's insane. That's way more than I thought. Obviously from a dog standpoint too, um, the, the unsanitary standards by which a lot of the pet food is made. The current pet food is not good for dogs. And then also a lot of dogs have allergies and they can't consume a lot of the standard pet food. And instead they have to go with really expensive premium brands. So having this as an option is incredible. And it's also great for me for someone who's vegan and cares about all these things because we are 
uh, looking to adopt a dog in the near future. So my big questions now, um, again, I'd like to hear more about the protein thing, uh, but also cost and taste. So they say that it's highly palatable, which seems believable. You're talking about Koji, you're talking about umami flavor. Um, but you know, you never know. You might get a really, really picky dog who does, just doesn't like it, right? I think it's, this is less of an issue than with cats, right? Dogs tend to be less picky than cats. But I've certainly, as a pet sitter, I have known typically tiny dogs, <laughs> tiny little dogs who are basically cats who can be very, very picky. So um, yeah, and then the other issue would be cost. They say that it is inexpensive, but inexpensive ca compared to what? Are we comparing it to the crazy premium brands that are like $3 per tiny can, right? Like it may still be significantly more than just your standard dog food. I'm expecting it to be at least a little bit more, right? You're talking about a much smaller operation than like Yukonuba or Pedigree, what, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember the dog food brands, but you know what I'm talking about. So I expect it to be just a little bit more, but how much more? I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hello again. I have changed outfits. It's actually a different day, but let's just pretend it's the same day. And I just changed my makeup too and my outfit because I'm basically Beyonce. Uh, so I did look up the price thing just to make sure there wasn't any more information. And I did find this Forbes article from just a few months ago from March of this year, 2018, where they say that the food would cost 20 to $30 per 20 pound bag. So a dollar to a dollar 50 per pound, which would be incredible. That would be cheaper than the premium brands. That would be cheaper even than like a lot of the limited ingredient allergen brands like Natural Balance. And it would also be cheaper than a lot of the vegan brands like V-Dog, which is $70 per 30 pound bag, and Halo, which is $38 per 10 pound bag. Who, who is buying that? I mean, I guess if you have a really tiny dog that doesn't eat a whole lot, it's not so bad. But what if you have like a Great Dane or even just like a medium to large breed, like a Labrador or something? That's pretty expensive. Anyway, that price would be amazing. A dollar to a dollar fifty per pound would be pretty incredible. But this is the only place I saw this mentioned was in that Forbes article again from a few months ago. Um, I haven't seen that on the Wild Earth website, anything from there in their little PR statements or anything like that. Again, the only thing they've said is that it would be inexpensive. So uh, don't get your hopes up, I guess. And also I was right about the initial release date being in 2018, at least again, according to that Forbes article, it was supposed to be available via their website. So you could buy it, you know, online on their website um, in three to four months. And again, this was written in March. So that would be like now, like right now. I'm being a little bit snarky, but Again, I'm not surprised that this has been pushed back. I think that was pretty bold to come out and say that. Maybe not the, the best idea. I don't know. That seemed pretty crazy to me, um, given how new this all is, how young the company is. But yeah, even 2019 would be amazing. The other thing I wanted to mention is just about the testing. Um, I mentioned earlier the in vitro testing, but they are also doing in vivo testing, testing in actual animals. They are not doing the traditional way, which is to use caged animals, right? It's not ethical at all. Instead, they are using volunteers and their dogs. They are giving the food to volunteers to feed to their dogs. And again, they're actually working with a veterinarian, which is great. That's not something you always see with the, with smaller brands in general. Um, and of course, a lot of the vegan brands are smaller. They're really small companies. So that's it. Again, I'm excited. I'm a little bit skeptical still because you never know, but um, I really hope this becomes a thing and I really hope that dogs like it and man it would just it would just be so great to have an alternative to just corn and pea and what like garbanzo bean and oat you know th those are pretty much our options if you're looking to feed dogs vegan right it would be nice to have an alternative and I think it'll be easier to market because obviously this company, they don't just want vegans buying the food, right? They want a lot of people seeing the benefit of this, not just to the environment, but also for people who have dogs with allergies. I think people would be more likely to try a Koji-based food 
than like a corn or pea based food. And you can get the whole, look, it's an ancient, it's an ancient food that has been used, you know, in parts of Asia for thousands of years. Like people love that shit. Yeah, I'm excited. I wanna say I'm surprised, but I shouldn't be surprised, right? Because when you're talking about pet food, it's not nearly as regulated as human food, right? So it, it makes sense that someone would say, hey, <laughs> we wanna do cultured stuff. Maybe we should start with pets. Seems like there's a lot less red tape. It might be a little bit easier. So yeah, it, it makes total sense. But uh, yeah, I'm super excited. And obviously this isn't meat, you know, it's not in vitro meat, but they're looking into that, right? And I guess they are already working on it for the cat food, which would be incredible. I mean, that that is really exciting because we do already have some vegan and a lot of like vegetarian dog food that is up to AAF CO standards. But with cats, it's a lot harder. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I would love to hear your thoughts, comments, and questions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, subscribe, that's cool, and support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan, and I will have a new video very soon.